What's up guys and welcome back to WBC Builds and welcome to another episode of From Bricks to Blocks, the series where I take real life inspiration and turn it into Minecraft creations while showing you guys how I go about doing that. Now today I have something for you in the village of Brockenhurst. Now I don't know about you but I keep seeing this gatehouse everywhere on Pinterest, on Instagram, on the inside of my eyelids. Yeah, maybe because I've been looking at Instagram too much, but here it is, this lovely Chateau-esque Gothic Revival Victorian gatehouse for Brockenhurst Park, a large manor house that used to sit all the way up the end of this driveway. Now, before I get into any more information about this place, I'm going to put on my boots and go for a little walk across the forest to get some first-hand pictures and footage of this place, so let's go. So while there is some good information online about the gatehouse, I wanted to go see it in person because for one, it's a nice day, two, it's not too far away, about a five mile walk from my house, so it's a, you know, across open terrain such as this you're seeing on screen, but this is the new forest and the new forest has some beautiful, beautiful stuff going on with it. Lots of inspiration, lots of abandoned old railways and just buildings out in the middle of nowhere. So I think one day I will definitely come across here and give you guys a proper inspirational video about the goings on of the new forest. But we've arrived here in Brockenhurst, the lovely little village that's been around since the Doomsday Book. Actually, it's even been here before the Normans came over. Again, there is loads of inspiration here, so one day we'll get round to that. But here we are at the gatehouse, the entrance to Brockenhurst Park. Now, like I said, it's a chateau-esque, and that is kind of just what it's going for, this nice sort of French fairy tale looking castle type structure. Uh, and it's really quite fancy for a gatehouse. Now, it was built in the 1860s slash 70s as part of the upgrade works, the existing Georgian house that's been here since the 1770s. This park, this manor actually has been here since the days of the Saxons. So there was two manors in Brockenhurst, Brookley and Brockenhurst, and Brockenhurst became the more dominant one. Brookley got sold off in the 1890s and became the main village of Brockenhurst. There, a little bit of history for you there. But this is all that remains of the actual main house. The main house itself was, as you can see on screen now, an absolutely beautiful sort of chateau built here with a huge Italianate gardens that was rivaled by, you know, Osborne House and the Greats of the time. So people used to come here. I think even Wilhelm Kaiser II came here for a holiday or something along those lines. Now, what happened was it was removed in the 1960s and it's now just a modern house. Uh, yeah, it's not great. But what is quite nice is we still have this lovely gatehouse. Okay, so there's a little bit of history behind the building. Now, let's get on to actually turning it into a Minecraft build. So, first things first, let's discuss the block palette. So, my first thoughts here for the main colour palettes of this building is an overwhelming amount of brick. Now, that brick is going to be mixed with some granite to give it a nice sort of oldy, waldy sort of feel to it. That's not a way of describing this, but a more worn look to it because the building right now is about 150, 160 years old, so it is starting to look a bit worn. Now, no points for actually guessing what the main accent block is going to be. That's correct. I'm using sandstone around here, cut sandstone, sandstone walls, but also some stripped birch. Because stripped birch goes really nice with smooth sandstone and also just plain sandstone, especially in our texture pack as well. If you wish to use our texture pack, you can download it from our Discord. The link is down below in the description. Speaking of sort of little details around here, we have the main gateway and actual gates. So for this, I'm gonna be using iron fences because again, in our texture pack, they are black, so they work perfectly for this. Okay, underneath the main archway, we have a sort of uh, beams made out of art oak that's been painted. So I'm probably gonna be using dark oak for that, stripped dark oak more than likely, with some quartz slabs under there as well, just to sort of get that going. Now the windows are going to be using a sort of white stained glass because we have it in our texture pack with the actual frames around it so that works perfectly. In the normal game white stained glass would also work perfectly fine. For the roof I'm going to be using stone bricks, some mossy stone bricks, a bit of andesite and then the lead coverings on the side I will be using some diorite walls to make that sort of work and give the shape of the mansard roof. For the chimneys, you guys probably know me by now, I'll be using anvils there to give that a little bit of detail. And then some more little details around the place. The drain pipes are quite white, so for me, I'm going to be using some birch fences for that because that's all we've got, closest thing to sort of quartz. And then just going around the rest of the building, going to need to throw in some bushes and some bits and bobs with some leaves. So that is the main colour palette for this and the main blocks I'm going to be using. It's now time to go start reading this building and trying to find out how to turn it into the game. There's a lot of details on it. It isn't going to be an easy one, so let's go take a look at that. 
Right, so I come over here into MS Paint, having a little go at trying to divvy this up into blocks. Now, first things first, I like to start with the left-hand side you can see here, and this is the molding that runs down the edge of the main archway. Now, for me, this is gonna be one block wide, and it's gonna compose of uh, cut sandstone with some sandstone walls, and then probably have more cut sandstone here at the top as we make our way up to the main flourishes. Now next to this, there needs to be another full block just to get that details in here. This is probably gonna be some sandstone walls again with the starting of maybe some stripped birch up here. This is gonna be the hardest part to do. It's quite a hard arch because it's it's actually elongated. It's not a circle. Uh, so maybe some trapdoors on the edges here might help with that design. I'll show you guys that once we get into the game. So if I close it in a little bit more, that's gonna be one block there. Now. What I'm already feeling is we need to make it an odd number in the center because I want to get this sort of solo detail for the center here. I usually do my builds with two block wide centers and they can turn out quite nicely and they, they, they do feel a bit oversized sometimes. This build, I'm a bit worried about making it too wide. This section, I probably will make it a little bit wider because I'm already looking at this bay window going, yeah, that's one block. That's also one block next to it. Uh, let's do that now. Oh, if I can do that, that's one, and then this is also one, one more block there, another one in the center. So before you know it, that's nine blocks wide, where in reality, it's probably only about three meters wide. So that's like double the size or even three times the size. Don't worry about that too much because this building doesn't have to be built 100%. I'm never gonna build it 100%. So what I'm doing from this here is I'm gonna put in another block there, probably another block, and then What's that, four? I reckon we'll have to have five before we get to the center, which means this building is going to be 11 blocks wide. Uh, doing that will give us quite a nice scope to actually build this archway up here. These little uh, sort of flourishes, I call them, uh, the, the pediment that's been broken with the crest in the center. So looking at that, I think it's probably time to go jump into the game and see how this looks in there, just the archway. Uh, maybe also we'll get this detail in as well. So that'd be one block there. I'm thinking stripped birch for that. I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. One more block and then a third block there. And you can see this little detail here. Hopefully three blocks would be enough for us to get that detail in. Okay, let's go jump into the game and we can talk about this a bit more over there. Okay, so we're in the game here now. What you can see is I've started doing the main archway. And what I noticed was it wasn't looking very round. So I think if we come over here and maybe add in some birch trap doors just to the sort of top and bottom, that might help out. So one there, uh, there, there, and there. Yeah, that's, do you know what? It's crazy how a trap door can just make it look a lot nicer and a lot rounder. We'll do the same on the back here. So what you may have noticed as well is I didn't show you guys the rear of the building. I didn't show you guys anything at that back here. And that's because obviously it's on private land. I couldn't just walk on through the gates. Um, so what has happened is I found a picture online and I found even a 3D model online that someone's made of this for a game or something. I'm not entirely sure what it was for. So I have an idea of what the back looks like. There's like a little diagonal room here. We'll get that in later on, but the rest of it is just a basic shape. So that is perfectly fine. And yes, it is a flip of back and front. So that's easy going for me. What you can notice as well is I've added in the main carriageway area now. So I've gone for quite a nice little cobbled street section. Actually, it did look similar to this over there in the picture. I do like using horn coral and uh, dead tube coral as well to really start getting out those sort of different colors, different sizes of sort of cobblestones. I don't like using cobble, <laughs> you know, probably would be the one you would go for, but I don't like using it. And you can see here, I've actually used basalt and a bit of gravel in the base of what will be the cattle grid. So I want to show you guys how I was going to do this cattle grid. And it is just a case of iron bars, like so. Now I was thinking, can we use, can we use chains? Now I'm not entirely sure. I don't know if you can stand on chains. I don't, I don't know. Let's have a look. The issue here is it's not, no, you just, you just, do you just fall through them? Yeah, it's not deep enough. It doesn't doesn't look right. It's a shame, really, because that would have been quite a nice little detail. So let's put this cattle grid in like that. Okay, so the cattle grid's in, and a few other little things I want to do before we jump back over and start reading the building again is to get this bay window in. So everyone always asks me, how do you do your bay windows? The answer, I don't know. I seem to change them up each time, but the sort of basic is 
you step one out, you might step out another one if you've got another window on the side. Then you have your flax section at the front. If it's a bow, you have another sort of step out here. And then you step back in again to get the right shape. But for me, that's kind of my bays there. I want to use some birch trapdoors here just to line the windows. I'm going to do it on that side. So I'm kind of going to go for one wide windows around the whole sort of shebang. Usually I use two wide, but I think this is going to work perfectly fine for one wide. Do I want a trap door there? What am I going to do with this window? Hmm. Haven't decided yet. Maybe more walls up like that. Yeah, and then trap door. No, actually, let's get some glass panes out. So here we go. You can see my thought process now as we're going through this. Um, yeah, like that. This would be, okay, uh, do, 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 like so. Yeah, like that. So that's one step back, which I think looks okay. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that looks good. And then we'll do the same over this side. Perfect. So that's the bay window in on this side. And I wanted to sort of turn our attention before we jump back out again to this side over here. So what's going on that I've seen from the pictures is there's like a little doorway here. And it's the same over this side. Now that takes you into a room that sits behind here. Now this room sort of sits behind the area that I'm going to describe as being, you know, the flanking wall. So I'm going to build that out about there. At this point, I want to go one then one again, and then start building like a, uh, a wall that's broken away like that. And then from what I saw in the picture, this carries on a little bit behind it. And there's like a two wide section. Could be three. What's this? I built that two wide. So this is just like a little kick out. It does that. And then this does that. Now I'm thinking mm, from the picture, it looked like it was one back a bit more again. So maybe something like that. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll build that little room up again in a second once we jump back over onto the image and I can have a, a clearer picture of what's going on. But this is really starting to take shape now. Yeah, I think it's the same over this side again. So we've got another probably and then and then maybe like that. So I'm just doing this as sort of, yeah, placing it in. This will go on my server one day. It may go on my server in this video. We will see. I haven't decided yet, but I do want to use this and Brockenhurst Park as part of my server build. So let's jump back over and have a look at the picture again and start trying to work out what to do with this top section which is going to be quite a hard little detail to it. So we're back over here reading the building again. Let's start to talk about this middle section here for the main tower. So this here, I reckon, is about ooh, four blocks high, three blocks high, probably three exposed, one behind this lovely pediment here. Now, this will need to carry on across to the center. The window, I'm going to give that five blocks just because I want these actual windows inside to be you know one block wide then we've got one block there in the center then another block wide there as well i'm going to probably use trap doors on the side here to bring it in a little bit so it doesn't look massively overscaled uh, and then we've got about probably five blocks again here for this so with the trap doors on there it helps you keep that little lip so it looks really quite nice i think that's going to work quite well uh, we then obviously got this small little window at the top here, and that is actually the main driving force behind the reason why I wanted to go for one block wide in the centre. The, the detail down here, but also the single window up here, which really does set the roof off quite well. If we move on back down to this section here, oh, this is going to be tricky, and I've you know put off the idea of even building this just because of this what I like to call flourishes around this, but I think it's very doable with slabs and then some stairs. So we're going to use cut sandstone slabs, probably smooth sandstone stairs, or maybe even just sandstone stairs to get a bit of this wear and tear on there. Then for the center, I'm probably just going to use sandstone walls, maybe some birch in there as well to get a bit of like detailing on it because birch just helps, like I said before, set off the sandstone quite well. Then it comes onto the roof. Now, I want to get this section of the roof done before we even look at this building over here. So it's going to be a mansard roof. I'm thinking probably one block step in every three blocks high. It seems to be quite an even sort of triangular shaped one. Uh, and then we've got the little details at the top up there as well, which is just going to be like three pieces of iron fencing with one either side there. When it comes to the chimney, I'm thinking stripped birch and you know maybe some birch details in in there but this obviously just carries on all the way up to the same point as there 
and it seems to be along the edge of the wall like that with a bit of connection in the middle there between that and the main roof yeah this is going to be one block wide probably three blocks uh, deep if that makes sense and i think that's probably all we got going on for the chimney bit of detail on top of there with some slabs and that uh, but yeah this is the main section that i'm worried about so we'll see how that looks in game i'm just thinking these little railings around here will look quite good if they were sitting on a trap door rather than a full block because that's not a very heavy cornice there so we want to bring this cornice well, sorry speaking of cornices we want to bring this all up so it's at the same level so i'll probably fill in this bit of wall here but we'll come back over and talk about this section later on okay i think it's time to jump back over into the game now to discuss what's going on with this tower section as it's quite an interesting part of the building so let's go take a look at that see the roof is on and it's already starting to really tape shape not just the roof but the main pediment in the center there as well and i am so happy of how this turned out so using the slabs going up like this and then these backward stairs just help bring this sort of sweeping action into it. You can see behind there I've used some stripped birch to make it look a bit more detailed at the back. So when you put the shaders on as well it sort of pops because you've got a bit of depth in there as well. So this is looking good. This has turned out really nicely. The mansard roof was hard but I went up like I said in the other section. Uh, one block every three blocks high. And then in between those, I've added some slabs just to help bring it a little bit more of a curve to it to make it look like it's sort of going up on all angles, if that makes sense. So coming around to the chimney on this side, I've just sort of textured it up with some birch planks in there to give it a bit more depth of sort of shape and color. And then, like I said, on the top here, I went for anvils and anvils and some sandstone slabs at the top there to make it a little bit more detailed. We've got the uh, the diorite walls down the side, which act really nicely as a sort of lead covering on it. And overall, I'm really, really happy with how it's turned out. Got some uh, little uh, drain pipes down the side here with some hoppers on it, just so it sort of acts like rain catchers. You can see here, I've actually debugged these uh, so they aren't actually connected to the wall. You can use that if you're playing on Java and have cheats enabled. Uh, if not, then unfortunately you cannot use it. Uh, and then the final things on here, I've come in and I've added this little section under here. So I might have done it one block too high. Uh, maybe, but we'll leave it up there for now. But you can see here I've used uh, beams, uh, sorry, dark oak as beams and then sort of used a slab to make it look a bit more like they aren't so protruding out of here, which looks, yeah, a bit more close to life. And the other things worth mentioning is I put the little doorways in, uh, so they've sort of set back a little bit from the main carriageway. And I've put the little room at the back here as well, which has just got a flat roof on it, uh, which I've textured with all of the sort of mossy colors. Now, what's left to do if we jump back over and start building the second side is just put in the fences, uh, sorry, the gates. So let's put this up like that. This is going to be four blocks wide, both sides. Now that might not equal the center. There may be a block missing in the center, but don't worry. These gates will stay open and we'll never, ever notice that. Okay, so that's the main section done. It's time now to jump back over and start reading the building again so we can get this section going, especially with the roof on that bay there and also the roof on this. Once we're done with that, we can then jump back over and have a look at what the back's going to look like and then I finally get it into some landscape. So I'm going to jump back over and look at the picture. Okay, so we're back over here in trusty MS Paint looking at the picture again. Now, looking at this section, I think it's clear that these windows are the same size. The only issue is this pediment at the top. It's a broken pediment, and I have trialed doing this in the game a few times in the past, and I find it impossible to do. So if you guys have a technique for that, let me know in the comments below. But apart from that, I'm just gonna build it like a normal pediment. I think that will look fine. It'll probably match what we've got going on over there. So this is five blocks wide. Then we've already got all of this sort of set in stone, so to speak. So all it's left to look at for this section is the roof, which is a pain. Uh, so it's, it's a rounded sort of what we call an onion shape, but then it's got this actual triangle pyramid on top. Um, now, I have scaled this building up slightly on this side. I told you earlier on this was nine blocks wide, where in reality it may be three or four um, meters, sorry. Um, but this, I think I've actually done it the wrong way around. It seems the building's far longer that side than it is across the front here. So I think I've got my roof around the wrong way. 
but don't worry about that because the building still looks great i think in my in my own opinion on that one what you can see going on here is we've got a wall to the side here on the right and that is actually blocking out a section of rooms that actually sits over there with a slope roof on it we'll have that in in a second as well what i want to do for that is just use slabs going down at a sort of low level i'll show you a picture of that later on then it's just a connecting bit in between here and there which would be quite easy to do just again in the same way we've done this one over here all that's left to do on this one is that there's a chimney at the back and also this little detail up here which is just going to be a similar one to what we've done over there there's no point putting any little flourishes on top of that one but let's go back into the game and see how this is now looking so here we are the main front of the building and also the side is done so let's go take a quick look at this what you can see here that's different is I've actually put the little railings around the top here on top of the bay. I've used a debug stick here to make these walls stick out, well, actually close up so they aren't sticking together anymore, which gives you this nice little railing effect. And I put some trap doors around the top there. That's quite a nice little technique to use uh, if you are looking for a railing sort of technique that is still vanilla but does require the debug stick. Now, the roof, I think it turned out okay it's the correct shape as such it's sort of a rounded bowl upside down uh, this section didn't work out very well ignore all of these holes in here i don't know why i've left so many holes let me just put some uh, little blocks in there but still I'm, I'm i'm happy with it you heard me sigh there but i am happy with how it turned out it's the issue is it's 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 too short this side but if i made it any longer it wouldn't match up with the back of the building here. So that's just the limitations of building in Minecraft and trying to get the correct details that you want in while sacrificing those that really can't sort of stay in the game anymore. Now you may be noticing as well, what is this? Where does this come from? So this is my interpretation of what I can see from Google Maps in terms of the sort of area outside here, which is like um, a sort of living area, I would say. Because if you look on, on the actual website, um, there's a picture of the, of the back and it says it sleeps up to four people I think it's a bed and breakfast these days so that's quite an interesting one and that's again a little detail I want to add on the back there but we've got the chimney in which I think looks good that's uh, smaller than the main chimney over there but you can see it, it helps balance the building off by itself which is really nice so zoom on through here and I think we should jump back over for the final time to read the building and get this back section in so let's go Take a look at that. Okay, so on screen now I have the 3D rendering that I spoke about earlier on. It is quite stylized. It has been sort of scaled down, I think, to fit into whatever it was for. But what it does do is it gives me the idea of what goes where. So you can see these outbuildings on the side here are what I showed you earlier on in the video to make sure those were sort of the right shape. I have changed the size and proportions of them for the game anyway. What we got in the center here is the back part of the main living area and it's got a nice sort of Dutch slash Flemish sort of section here on the gable which again interesting little design might be quite hard to get into game. I'm thinking this is probably two blocks that's two blocks that's two blocks yeah as it goes round like that. Maybe that's one block wide. I don't know that's gonna be quite hard to do we'll see how that looks in game and then we have this diagonal section here which is yeah an interesting choice I have to make sure it doesn't stick out into the carriageway so probably like three blocks out that way yeah three blocks and then three blocks I think we'll see how that looks might even go five by five we might have enough space for that but this roof's going out of slabs are sort of going down uh, in maybe intervals of one this was two so this was a, a sort of shallower slope this one looks fairly steep compared to that we'll see how that looks but anyway let's jump back over into the game and see how this is all going so here we have it the back of the building is now complete and yeah i think it's turned out okay this little area here i had to scale up quite a bit so i've done it what's that four three yeah four blocks out and then five blocks across the front and back in again and the roof is slightly higher than it should be but to be honest i am really really happy of how this has turned out i think it's all starting to look like a nice little gatehouse i say little it is massive there's only one thing left to do and that is to texture all of this brick so i'm going to select a little point over there and come on over to this other side here up in the sky do my second position and then just type in replace 45 with 45 uh, I'm gonna go for a 60 percent 40 percent split with granite I think and hey presto that should give us a nice little bit of texturing in the walls which it has done and instantly it takes the harshness of the white lines and the bricks down and gives you a nice warmer color to the actual overall texture 
So guys, I'm going to take it over now onto my server and I'll show you what it looks like in a proper landscape. So let's jump on over to that. So then, after a quick little jump cut, we are here on my server with the final product. Let me walk around this little hedge here. Let me walk around this tree, down the road, and there it is. The gatehouse, North Lodge Gatehouse from Brockenhurst Park, now seated on my server in a geographically similar location actually that there is the main line that runs to uh i guess whiteberg all the way down through brookley which is my version of brockenhurst all i've done is rotated it about 90 degrees so it no longer sits facing the north i wanted to do this so i could get the good shader shots on it because i think a lot of you probably already know shaders really only work in like the, the sort of west and east directions but look at that Oh, so happy of how this turned out. Uh, the roof was the hardest part, I must say. It took many, many tries to get that right. I'm really happy of how this turned out, the little archway through it, and the undercarriage as well. I think that looks great. And we've got the cattle grids, which just add that little bit of extra detail. Now, what I've done here as well is I wanted to make this sort of path through here feel a bit more rutted, a bit more like you only get the carriages up here, you only get the carts up here. You're not using it like this, where cars are just going every well, not even cars. Well, they would be cars, but traffic's just going all the way, every way. Now, up this little route here, I will one day have a church that sits in the rest of this park, but that is for future sort of products. You can see here, I've got the whole landscape already started to uh, get planned out, but we are just here for the lodge today. So, do you want to see it in some shaders? Of course you do. Let me change over to some shaders, and we can see what the final product looks like. And there we have it. The final, final product with the lovely, lovely shaders sitting here. About 3.15? Yeah, about 3.30. And I've got to say, they do it justice, don't they, guys? Look at that. I think that's, that's probably the best part that came out of this. But, yeah, so I really hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, sort of bricks to blocks. I know I haven't done one of these for ages. I think it was November the last time I put one of these out. But as you can see, I like to go ham on them. I like to really, really make sure everything is sort of together. Everything is working nice and well. And I like to go out and actually see it for person as well, just to get perspective on what's going on. So if you guys want to see more of these, let me know. If not, that's okay. But still, I really enjoy making them as they are something that is just so different. I've never seen anyone else do a video format like this. And i got to say, they are fun to make. So guys, thank you all for watching. I will leave you with a parting shot here of the lodge. And remember, get inspired, get building, and I'll see you next time.